Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be in the Lord's house. We're delighted that you've chosen to be here this morning. Delighted to see that you are chatting with one another and welcoming each other in our Christian fellowship and probably catching up on the week's events and all kinds of things. So that's, a, that's good news. We take a look at the announcements at first. We want to note the flowers that are in uh, our sanctuary this morning. Uh, the flowers are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Jim Pennon's uh, 48th anniversary of his 29th birthday. And you know, folks, I'd do that if I thought I could keep up with it, but I know I can't, so I'm just going to admit to my age and move on. <laughs> but thank you. And the rose, uh, the uh, rose is given in honor of uh, John Henry Eames. He was born on January the 17th. Uh, the information is listed as to who he is a son and grandson of. Uh, but I think great grandparents ought to be recognized. He is a great grandson of Becky. Becky, congratulations. And I know you're not spoiling that child one little bit. We can never do that, right? All right. Have fun at it. All right, as we take a look at the announcements, always want to invite any first time guests that we might have to a welcome center for a guest that awaits you. Uh, lots of things that are coming up um, as we move through the week. On Tuesday the 29th, we will be holding and mailing out the newsletters at 10, so get our group in to take care of that activity. The Wednesday activities, of course, the after-school program has started again, so we look forward to all that energy and excitement when they come in. So keep that in mind, and also the dinner is listed with the menu. If you've not signed up, please do so on the uh, list that's on the bulletin board. And our prayer time is in First Peter. We'd invite you to come and be a part of that if you would so desire. There are some dishes that have accumulated. If, they, if you want to check it out, they're on the table as you go out of the fellowship door. Uh, looking ahead for the Spirit of Love class will go out to uh, lunch on the 4th. The uh, bus will leave at 11 here from the church. On the 5th, the cemetery committee and the trustees will meet at 7 p.m. On the 11th, we have the prayer meeting for the Mid-Tide Order. And then on the 16th, there's a training for uh, youth for the Mid-Tide Order. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please sign up. Uh, you need to know how many are coming so that we could be prepared to serve them. Brenda, is there anything else that you would like to add to that? Uh, no, I said I don't have about 12 at RTP, but as you all know, everybody waits for the last minute. Um, the deadline is the uh, Sunday afternoon. So two more weeks. Okay. What is the subject? Um, basically, how can I get my flyer? Probably. That's a long time ago. Yeah, it's how to get um, youth involved and how to get new covers in Williams and all. Thank you. Um, also on the 16th, uh, David will be going to Richmond to uh, feed the homeless and the information of what he needs, the chili and the cornbread and so forth is there. There is a sign-up sheet and you're asked to come and, and uh, help out in that. So. Uh, please do that, and also we are using that occasion to prepare for our <clears throat> uh, potato and chili salad bar that will be coming up the next day on Sunday the 17th. Uh, so sign up for that sheet as well. They're all on the bulletin board uh, for your um, signature. And any old keys that we have for the blue band, we need those to be turned in uh, to the office. I'll go back to the homeless. David, was there anything you wanted to add? No, we're going on the 16th, though. It says in the bulletin we're going on the 17th at the end, but we're going on the 16th. That morning we'll go up and serve, and, and it is cold time. We do need coats and men's clothes as much as possible. 
Okay, thank you. Yes, it does. It originally says the 16th and then changes to the 17th, so please keep that. It is the 16th. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? One. On February the 9th, which is a Saturday, the Joy Club's going to meet that day at 12 noon because uh, we're going to have a jewelry show after we have our meeting and luncheon. All right. I think that's in the news all right. Anyone else? Let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Yesterday got started 
Uh, CJ and Helen have done a wonderful job. I wish everybody could have just been here and heard CJ, how enthused she is, the projects that she's got for this church in missions. It's wonderful. Anybody would like to join, we'd like to have you. If you don't want to join, you can always help us. That was, I was very pleased that we've gotten this going. Right. And our next meeting will be the last Saturday of February, so you can just mark your calendars, come on out. We have projects for everybody, and uh, as I have uh, said before, if you're not into sewing, that's okay. We've got many, many other things that you can do, and the um, activities and the list is uh, uh, quite an exciting one, so please come out and be a part of that. Anyone else? Yes. Right, I have two things. First, we need to celebrate Claire Batley. She got her learners this weekend. <laughs> And second, today is my mom's birthday. All right, today is your mom's birthday, and it's also Robert's birthday. So, David, yes. would you lead us on a happy birthday for these two folks, please? Indeed, hear your word that tells us we are to share 
with those who are less fortunate than we. And we can reach out in ministry in so many ways, Father. And Lord, we do praise you for a WMU that looks for ways to minister, ways to reach out in our community, ways, Father, to indeed share the love of Christ around the world. Well, we know, Father, that in each of these things that we participate in all of the projects, we, we send out your love. We share the good news of Jesus Christ because we are ministering in your name. And Father, we thank you for relationships. We thank you, Father, that we can share together in the lives of your people, that we can rejoice in their accomplishments, Father, and that we can support them in their difficult times, wherever they are, Father, that we can indeed come together, that we can lift them up in prayer, that we can walk with them along the way. Father, we can reach out to them in phone calls and cards and notes, that we can indeed speak a word of your grace to those that are in need. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of lifting up those on our prayer list. Father, we acknowledge that you know their needs far greater than we. And so, Lord, we pray that you would address, address the concerns of their hearts, that you would lay your hand upon them, that they would feel your presence, that they would know your loving power, and that, Father, they would look to you for all the good that you will accomplish in their lives, even in the midst of difficulty. And, Father, we thank you for the greatest gift of we thank you for your son. Father, that's the thing that draws us here in your presence. We come because we are your people. We are the brothers and sisters of Christ Jesus. And Lord, we acknowledge that he is our Lord and Savior. He is our all in all. And we give you thanks that you saw to so fit to send your son for us. Father, we pray that indeed we could be that beacon of light that would share the good news to others as we journey along this life. That we might speak, Father, through both our words and our deeds, the love that you have placed within us. And that, Father, you would bless this church. Bless and use us, Lord, as we seek to do your will. And we pray, Father, that all that we do and say would be pleasing in your sight. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We'll continue our serving with the singing of hymn number 182, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. 182.
about to receive. Help to further your kingdom. In your name that we pray. Amen.
share with you this morning. Scripture that is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter, reading verses 29 through 34. Listen to God's word. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. May God bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Father, we always ask that indeed as the Holy Spirit revealed to John that Jesus was indeed the Christ, the Son of God. That it's through your Holy Spirit that you continue, Father, to reveal these certainties to us and allow us to grow more and more in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and God the Father. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Last Sunday, our sermon focused on Jesus' baptism. It was taken from the Gospel of Matthew in the third chapter. Today's text is taken from the Gospel of John. And it continues really and truly the story of Jesus' baptism, but it's through different lenses, a different perspective, if you will. In John's Gospel, the focus here is on John the Baptist and his prophetic announcement of Jesus as the promised Messiah, Jesus as the Son of God. As you know, the Gospel of John is unique and different from what we know as the synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Although all four of the Gospels share much of the same material, John just has a different approach, and it's not as easy for the great scholars to lock it, lock it out parallel line by line as they have done the synoptic Gospels. But indeed, as John is revealing his message to his people. He is speaking for a purpose. He is saying indeed in this gospel, what do people say that I am? The question that was asked by Jesus, it's about halfway through the gospel, by the way. Who do people say that I am? And John, indeed, throughout his gospel, he's answering that question. Little by little, he presents exactly who Jesus is. And he is encouraging each of the readers as he would be encouraging us today to be ready to answer that question for ourselves. Who do you say that Jesus is and was and will forever be? And in the 20th chapter of the book of John, in the 31st verse, he states clearly, clearly the purpose for which he writes. He says, and these, referring to signs, were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you might have life in his name. And so we know John has indeed a very worthwhile purpose in writing his gospel. He writes so that all who read and study and learn of these words would come to understand exactly who Jesus the Christ was. In the first 28 verses of the gospel of John, if you go back and read them, you will find that John has already said that he is Jesus, the Word. He is Jesus, the Light. He is Jesus, 
the Christ. He is Jesus, the Son of God. And in verse 29 today, he identifies Jesus as the Lamb. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Charles Spurgeon has said that this verse indeed is a whole gospel in very brief form. Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I think that in order to appreciate the full meaning of the scripture, it sort of draws us back, if you would, to the Old Testament images that indeed the children of Israel had. The scripture speaks about much of offerings and sacrifices. If you read through the Old Testament, you will find that there were many, many offerings. There were burnt offerings, there were sin offerings, there were grain offerings, there were wave offerings, there were guilt offerings, there were tax offerings, and there were several others, many, many offerings. And with each of those offerings, a sacrifice was necessary in order to make that offering. The sacrifices, as you know, included bulls and goats and calves and oxen, rams, uh, sheep, pigeons, and doves. And it tells you very specifically and precisely in the Old Testament what kind of an offering needed to be made, what kind of a sacrifice needed to be made for many, many of, uh, for all of these offerings, as a matter of fact. But the lamb, the lamb was commonly used in a ritual of sacrifice. And as you remember, that lamb had to be a lamb without blemish. It had to be a perfect, perfect lamb that was given as a sacrifice. And this scripture might also draw us back and think about the Passover. Because remember, the Passover was still being observed in Jesus' time as it still is observed by Jews today. The Passover was such a defining event in their lives when they thought back to being slaves in Egypt. And remember, the scripture said that they cried out, under the burdens of Pharaoh in making the bricks. They cried out to the Lord. And the Lord heard their cry. Isn't that comforting for us to hear? They cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard their cry. And we know the great story of how he sends Moses and Aaron back to bring the people out of the land of Egypt and how resistant Pharaoh was. And so we have that accounting of the, the great plagues that he sent indeed upon the Egyptians and down to that final last plague. And he says, and when I send this one, they will gladly let you go. And as you remember, that one was that the firstborn male of every family and all the livestock would die that night. But what saved the children of Israel? It was the blood of the lamb. They were told to slaughter the lamb and place the blood on the posts of their house. And as the angel of death passed through that land, he would pass by their homes and their sons would be saved. We know that great story. And indeed, they continue to celebrate that. And as you read the New Testament, for it's not just Old Testament scripture that we call upon, when we look at the New Testament, we find that Paul also thought of Jesus as a Passover lamb in 1 Corinthians 5, 7. He says, clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch as you really are unleavened for our Paschal lamb Christ has been sacrificed. In Isaiah 53, 7, 
It is prophesied that a lamb would be led to slaughter. We have those wonderful scriptures that indeed bring such images to mind when it says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that was led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears were silent, so he opened not his mouth. And later in Isaiah 53, we find, surely, surely he bore our sickness and carried our suffering. Yet, he considered, yet we considered him plagued, struck by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity. The punishment that brought our peace was on him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And all we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone turned to his own way. And God has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Oh, my friends, think about the scripture that talks about the willingness of Jesus to be sent into our world, the Son of God, willingly in obedience to God the Father, that he would lay down his life for the sin of the world. Paul tells us in Philippians 2, verses 6 through 8, who existing in the form of God, didn't consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men, and being found in him human form, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death. Yes, even death on a cross. Jesus Christ, my friends, we indeed acknowledge was slain, the Lamb of God for the sins of the world. And we as Christians today, we don't practice ritual sacrifices because we know, we know beyond any shadow of a doubt that Jesus made that ultimate sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin. And when we do make an offering, it's in response, my friends, in response to what Jesus, through God his Father, has done for us. And John is very quick to remind us, not only for us, not only for us, but also for the whole world. Jesus died for all. We are assured of eternal life because it is available through our faith, our faith in Christ Jesus. Our response, our response of faith, you know, my friends, is our obedience. That is indeed what God wants from each and every one of us, is obedience. And oh, how easy, my friends, it is for me to stand here and say that. But yes, I acknowledge it not as easily done as it is to say it. But we are to follow the example of Christ, that Lamb of God. We are to be called to a life of sacrifice. We are being called to a life of willingness to die to self. To die to self. And sometimes, oftentimes, it's hard to put self behind us. Hard to let go of who we are. <coughs> Who we want to be in order to say to God, I'm willing to be obedient to you, God. To be obedient to what you would have me to do. 
to be obedient to where you would have me to go. But you know, my friends, I, I strongly remember, and you've heard me say it probably before, that I was a school teacher, and I loved it. I loved it. It was what I had planned. I had, you got that right? <laughs> it is what I had planned to do since I was fairly young. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I would graduate from high school, I would go to Longwood College, I would graduate with a degree in mathematics, and I would teach school. And I did all of that. And I loved it. And I had no intentions, hear me, I had no intentions of giving it up. None. Guess what? My plan and God's plan somewhere down the road didn't come in alignment. And I know that struggle that exists when we have that inner sense that what God wants us to do and what we want to do are not the same. I know what that struggle is to set aside my will. And I still don't always get it right, by the way. You know I'm not a strong, hard-headed person. I'm sure you're aware of that, right? <laughs> you know? It's still a struggle. But it's a struggle, my friends, that I want you to understand is probably a part of all of us because it's the humanness in us. And we are human. It's a humanness in us that we want things the way we want them. And I'm here to tell you that oftentimes in God's plan, that's not what it is. He wants your obedience, pure and simple. It comes down to that, and that's what He is looking for. For us to die to self. For us to be willing to to get let go of our own egos, for us to be willing to let go of our own plans, for us to let go of all that perhaps we have envisioned in our lives so that we can truly experience life to its abundance. Because I'm going to tell you that, my friends, once I came to the point in this church one Sunday night, of saying to God, I'll go do it. Life abundantly has been true. Not in material wealth. It's never about that. It's just about knowing. Knowing that you're doing what God wants you to do. And it's not always easy. You know, you're going to run into folks that are going to say, I don't know what your problem is. You don't know how many people I ran into in the years, and they still exist, by the way. They haven't gone away. That would come and stand in front of me and go, I know you are not doing what God wants you to do. And you have to stand and just say, I'm fairly sure. You don't know the struggle I went to get here. I'm fairly sure. We have to get out of the way. God writes his gospel to reveal Jesus Christ. <clears throat> to reveal him to those who will believe. To reveal it to those who will, through faith, accept him. And the good news is that God has a plan. He has a plan for each and every one of us. He has a plan from the beginning of time of what he would want to do in our lives. And sometimes, my friends, I'm sure that path is fairly straight for some people. But I suspect that for many of us, it takes many a twist and a turn. But God is still going to get us there. He has indeed a destiny for each and every one of us to fulfill. And filling that destiny involves a surrender to of our will, to the will of God. Because you see, my friends, that's what Christ Jesus 
also had to do. The scriptures tell us he struggled. The scriptures speak about the agony in Christ as he was there in the garden. And yet ultimately he could come to that point of surrender. He could come indeed to surrender his will to God's good and perfect will. And my friends, that's what we are called to do. And in so doing, we will experience a fullness of life that God has in store for us. A fullness of life that we don't experience until we abandon self and follow him completely. In Luke 9, 23 and 24, Jesus tells his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, the same will save it. And so, my friends, as we hear the scripture, and as indeed we see the image that John has painted for us, the Lamb of God, who came into the world for the forgiveness of sin, our sins, your sins, my sins, the whole world, for all of those who will, by faith, accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I pray, my friends, that we would be those who one day will indeed stand around that great throne and be willing to sing with all the voices in heaven, worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessings. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we praise you for your word. We thank you that indeed through it you have been revealed to us in Christ Jesus. And that, Father, you call us to be your people. May we, Father, indeed in this time of invitation respond in kind. May we accept you as the Lord and Savior of our lives. Or Father, accept the challenge that you would set before us. May we be obedient as Christ our Lord is obedient. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is hymn number 211. My Jesus, I love you, verses 1, 2, and 3.
remind you of our game night tonight. If you come out and join us, that would be delightful. We get to see you. The other activities as they're printed in the bulletin, please be mindful of those. Let us bow down for the benediction. And now as we depart from this place and enter again into the world, may we take with us the love of God the Father, the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, his Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit, this day and all the days to come. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.